Source. The story starts with a normal high school guy enjoying himself alone on a beautiful sunny day. Our MC Suzumu soon finds he's got company. However, because there's a girl holding his video game controller in her hands, they're making some cute noises and she asks if he's been playing video games alone every day. She then suddenly kisses him before MC has a chance to respond. Yeah, anyone would think, this is his hot girlfriend but nah, this isn't his girlfriend. It's his cute Emoto, and she really loves playing these naughty sibling games with our MC. You see, many days earlier, Susumi was just minding his own business in his room, having a bit of fun. But then his big sis randomly popped in without knocking the door. It would have been fine and normal, but he just happened to be in the middle of a serious single-player FPS shooting game. They both locked eyes and MC thought, oh man, I'm so screwed, and tried to cover it. If this was the usual ecchi anime, she'd say Baka and hit him. But you know it's an H manga when she instead tells him he's growing up and offers to play his game for him. Yep, she's a pro after all. Since then she's been joining him on FPS gaming every day, helping him unlock every one of his achievements. What a lucky guy, indeed. Also, great Alabama, am I right? MC asks if his sister's got a boyfriend, but she just replies that this will be their secret. She then gives his controller a nice bit of attention, and when she beats his game, he ends up covering Big Sissy in a smoothie out of sheer excitement. Looks like his volcano had quite some pressure built up. Bosses do get frustrating like that, huh? The next day, Big Sis sneaks into his room to wait for him. When he gets home, she plans to drag MC into another gaming session, but stops because a wild competitor has appeared. A son of Saya, a girl from MC's school and also his girlfriend. She's a nice girl, but not nearly as well endowed as his sis. Saya runs up and says she wants to be very good friends. A week later, Big Sis hasn't done anything else out of respect, but she just really wants to play with his joystick and has grown quite a few horns on her head. In the shower, she realizes she's feeling really hot and she can't hold back. Meanwhile, in his room, MC gets a text from his girlfriend asking him out on a date. But Sis has different plans as she enters his room and tries to persuade him to gain with her, but he's reluctant because he doesn't want to do things with her anymore. We're 15 pages into an H manga, you think he's gonna stick to that? Sis shows off her large mountains and offers to practice boss mechanics with him. MC tries to escape to the bathroom, but she grabs his arm and pulls him in for a passionate kiss, trying to convince him to play with her. For someone reluctant, who knew he was also into French kissing. His sis pulls him onto the bed for some playful time and turns on his game. He initially gives some weak protests, but the blush on his face is way too honest, and MC's furniture turns to hardwood as his sis pulls up her shirt, her large mountains bouncing around. She asks if he wants to touch them and reassures him it'll be the last time. We're on page 19, so I somehow doubt that. To no one's surprise, his willpower breaks, and it's MC's first time touching her mountains, getting a nice lick at those two shrines at the top of those mountains. Each of those shrines has a milk vending machine, which MC visits. This gets his sis incredibly excited, and she takes him on a tour of the fine valley below. It must be raining today, because that valley is dripping wet. She begs him to play around there, and when he goes to put a finger in the scanner, she tells him, two is better than one, he obliges. It's a bit hot in the valley, which MC thinks is really incredible. Sis then notices a hard rock and asks if he's interested in drilling. MC agrees. Both sides consent and he goes in. It's really cozy in the mine, so MC soon finds himself coming to a stop and apologizing for not being able to last that long. He goes to take a break and his sis joins him, pulling out his popsicle and sucking on it. It must have been the best ice cream of her life because she starts to blush, spilling the cream. MC looks really embarrassed, but he feels refreshed. His sister, however, wants more. She climbs onto his hardwood tree, but there's a bit of wind and her hips start moving. It's a precarious situation and Big Sis ends up with some wood lodged deep inside of her. As the ice cream spills, MC looks up and calls out to her, both of them realizing what just happened. 
Apparently, she stole something from him, but neither cares and they have a nice long embrace. This gets more ice cream everywhere. Both feel really good as they come to a nice conclusion, too tired to go on. Looks like it was a nice day in the valley. The next day, MC and his girlfriend are at a restaurant, but he's distracted. You see, after they came to their senses, MC and his sister noticed a bunch of blood on the sheets. Nobody was murdered, of course, but it turns out it was his sister's first time exploring that ravine with another guy. It was a bit embarrassing to her, and she wanted him to keep it a secret. At the restaurant, MC apologizes to his way too understanding girlfriend and says he's not feeling well and needs to go home. His sister's sleeping on the couch and he goes to kiss her. Wasn't yesterday the last time? Apparently, MC can't stop thinking about last night and she feels the same. Their mom isn't going to be home today, so she offers to go valley exploring with him again. It feels great but she tells him to cover the hardwood with plastic. She gives consent, and they then go mining. MC puts it in deep, and she tells him to keep pounding. The rock is really hard and both find themselves coming to a stop. MC realizes that even when he was with his girlfriend, he never felt this way. They're both covered in sweat, so they go to the shower together. MC's mining tools still have quite a bit of power, so she cleans them with those two large sponges, causing his legs to start shaking, as he once again comes to the realization he loves her. After the shower, they go back to the bedroom where they soon run out of wood covers. But his sister teases him, is he done already? Well, MC has stopped caring about his girlfriend now, and he's down bad to go mining with his sister. They spend the entire night mining together, and his tool must have been made of some really high-quality hardwood, since it lasted the entire time. They hug each other, excited, and MC says he's planning on breaking up with his girlfriend to stay with his sister. There's a lot of rain, and now the mines are literally overflowing with liquids. Or maybe an ice cream truck spilled, because there's now cream everywhere. MC and Sis were up all night playing together. In the morning, N.C. is looking at his sister before burying his face in her mountains, which causes her to tease him. Just then, they hear the doorbell ringing. Who could it be? Did their father return home from getting milk? Or maybe their mother? Nope, it's Saya. She texted M.C. earlier and said she was going to visit them around this time, so they get dressed and answer the door. Saya asks if M.C. is feeling better, and Big Sis says yes, causing Saya to smile in relief. Ignorance is bliss after all. Our attention goes to Big Sis, who has just realized something. MC had told his girlfriend he was sick, just so he could go and have fun with his Big Sis. This means MC ended the date earlier for her. We see that this causes Sis to start dripping a bit and not from her eyes. You know what I mean. Oh yeah, MC's feeling a lot better, and so is his Big Sis. Anyways guys, comment down below how was this short manga story. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Also, don't forget to blow up the video with tons of likes and subscribers. That is, if you want more of these H anime mangas, and we'll also be happy to make more from your suggestions, so comment us with some good E manga recommendations. Make sure you include those which have a big plot and fewer action scenes. The story revolves around a 14-year-old middle school boy, Tomoya Mizuhara, whose father remarries and he gets an older elder sister, Ichika Mizuhara. Ichika Mizuhara is the 17-year-old titular stepsister. Outspoken and passionate, she immediately falls in love with Tomoya and is overly protective of him. The opening scene of the anime takes us to Mizuhara coming home from school. Upon entering his room, he sees his sister, who according to him is weird, about to change her clothes. His face almost explodes due to embarrassment. He begins to recall when she newly arrived at his place. She went into his room without even seeing him first. The flashback ends and he sends her out of his room with a loud bang. While he's taking off his clothes again, she strolls inside like it's nothing. Mizuhara, getting so fed up, pushed her outside again and shot the door harder than the last time. This time around Nichika sits alone wondering and playing with a stuffed doll that resembles Mizuhara. She keeps thinking to herself how cute Mizuhara is despite his small age. Also remaking sure that no one ever steals him from her, 
She stands up and twirls around after making a very sudden intuitive decision of moving into Mizuhara's room. Sadly, after reaching getting to his room, she sees a note from our NC that boldly tells her not to come inside, or else he would stop talking to her. However, she doesn't give up. She goes around the house and climbs up his window. Seeing Ichika trying to get into his room from outside, he rushed to help her get in. He asked her why he wanted to stay in his room. Ichika replies because she loves him. Mizuhara's face became red, it was almost too visible. He begins to think to himself the only person who could have ever said they loved him was his mother. He begins to reconsider letting her stay in his room. However, Ichika discovers Mizuhara in a boxer. Mizuhara is too embarrassed again and screams for her to get out. Meanwhile, their parents overhears their arguments and laugh over it. The next day, Tomoya accompanies his friend, Mitsuru Hanazono, to school, like they do every school day. Mitsuru thinks Tomoya's new girlfriend is cute. Unknowingly to them as they walk, Ichika sneaks up from behind and begins to follow them. Turns out, Ichika has a diary where she writes down all of Tomoya's friends and the one that she thinks might want to steal him away from her. According to her love scanning set of eyes, she refers to Mitsuru as normal, as there is no love energy coming from him. Tomoya sees her jotting something down and thinks she's scary, hiding like that. At school, Mitsuru talks about an online game while Tomoya sees his elder sister actually following him to school. He becomes very nervous when the teachers take her out. When class is about to start, Mina Fujisaki, one of the most popular girls in the whole class comes in. All of the boys have their faces in red, including Tomoya. However, in reality, Fujisaki enjoys the boys' praise, like a demon goddess that enjoys the prayers of her worshippers. Ichika comes in through the window to give Tomoya his food he had forgotten. Unintentionally, Ichika's beauty and level in academics steals all of Fujisaki's spotlight. Fujisaki is feeling betrayed but most importantly, outmatched. Ichika scans the area with her love scanning eyes only to discover love energy being emitted from Tomoya towards Fujisaki. She becomes disgusted by this and gives Fujisaki a death stare. One of MC's classmates blurts out Tomoya was in love with Fujisaki. MC quickly denies his love for Fujisaki before pushing Ichika out of his class. Feeling betrayed, Fujisaki apologizes for not being cute enough for Tomoya. Our protagonist's love life seemed to have crashed just under mere minutes. By the time MC gets home, Ichika tries to talk to him, but he angrily tells her to leave him alone and walks away. He realized how Ichika came all the way to his school to give him his food. Feeling bad for how he treated her, he apologized for his rudeness. During the weekend, Ichika says that her friends would be coming to visit her today. He has a brief summary her friends would be just a busybody just like his stepsister. But to his surprise when they arrived, they were quite normal. Ichika introduces them to Tomoya, Ruri, Hayasaka, and Marina. Tomoya's eyes suddenly land on Marina's huge bosom. Ichika notices this and intensely whacks Marina on her chest. Domestic violence! <laughs> Tomoya starts crying as someone could finally understand the pain he went through. Ruri, on the other hand, says if Tomoya were her brother, she wouldn't have to use the famous finishing move German suplex on him. Tomoya quickly runs over to Mitsuru house. He just couldn't take enough of the girls. Meanwhile, Marina poses an idea that Tomoya could be going to visit a girl and not a male friend after all. Ichika immediately tries to find out by following him, but Ruri stops her by the leg and tells her to give Tomoya a little bit of space, which Ichika reluctantly agrees to. Meanwhile, over at Mitsuru's place, Mitsuru claimed to have seen the pretty older girls visiting Tomoya's house. He irrationally begins to cry as Tomoya, his best friend was now surrounded with nothing but pretty older girls. Tomoya promised to introduce them to him, and abruptly he quit crying 
and made Tomoya his best friend once again. When the girls are leaving for the day, Tomoya and Mitsuru appear at his front gate coincidentally. Ichika immediately begins to chase Tomoya around and across the street. As for Mitsuru, he introduces himself as the world's number one pretty boy. In between his sentences, he paused a little. Later we find out he was just as amazed as Tomoyo was when Tomoya saw Marina's huge bosom. Mitsuru turns around and you won't believe he praised her loudly for having such amazing bosom. Marina gets insecure and yells at him for being like the others. The next day in school, Ichika gives Tomoya a call just to make sure no one was bullying him for being cute. Tomoya prepares to hang up when he unknowingly bumps into Koki Hayasaka, an uptight classmate of Tomoya who is often admired for his academic ability. Koki has an undeniable dislike for most things, including girls. He accuses Tomoya of being a blondie. Mitsuru comes from nowhere and strikes Koki on his neck. He explained that even though Koki excels in his academics, someone like Koki would never get a girlfriend. Koki turns his back to them as he explains their only reason to be conceited was because he had an older sister. A group of girls walk past them while praising Koki for acing the last test again. However, Koki's reply to them was he hated annoying girls like that. Mitsuri flares up after hearing him say he hates girls. Tomoya holds Mitsuri down from entering a fight with Koki. Mitsuri seems to not be able to tolerate boys who don't have respect for beautiful girls. Meanwhile, Ichika and Ruri run over to check on MC. While their fight is going on, Ruri calls out Koki's name. He notices the voice and turns around. Ruri then walks towards him, while asking if he was the one bullying Tomoya. Koki stutters as he knew he was in trouble. Ruri gets closer and lands bunch of punches onto him. Later, we see Koki's face being all plastered. Tomoya told him that he didn't realize Ruri was his sister all along. Likewise, Koki, who had no idea that MC's sister was Ichika. After the event, Mitsuri speculates any boy who becomes Ruri's boyfriend would have it tough. Koki, on the other hand, refuses to tolerate any guy trying to hit on his sister. Mitsuru puts on a stupefied expression and deduces that Koki was a siscon, a sister complex. Commonly abbreviated as siscon, it means a brother who has a strong attachment and obsession for their sister. As they all walked back home, Tomoya wore a very visible smile on his face as he watched Koki get bullied by Ruri. He begins to remember when he was all alone several years ago without any sibling and no one to talk to. He thought maybe this was the fun that came with having a sibling. He thought maybe having Ichika as a sister shouldn't be so bad after all. Ichika jumps beside him and wishes they go home. Meanwhile, looking at how Ruri treated Koki like a stuffed animal, he figured his relationship with Ichika was just fine. It's very sunny during the weekend. Tomoya is soaked in his own sweat as he returns home. He thought for someone like Ichika, she wouldn't be affected by the intense heat. However, he's shocked to see her face down and soaked at the entrance gate. Inside, his stepmother, Yuko Mizuhara, told Tomoya that Ichika hated hot weathers as they often made her pass out. She suggested they go to the pool. Ichika wakes up suddenly with two red matching swimsuits in her hands and urges Tomoya to go to the pool. Mitsuru from nowhere shows up in Tomoya's sitting room, appearing super excited for their trip to the pool. Ichika's friends are already in the pool and looking very stunning in their swimsuits. Fuchisaki appears in her swimsuit and catches all the guys off guard. Even Tomoya's face flourishes red when he sees Fujisaki in her swimsuit. Fujisaki sees her rival, Ichika, in beauty. The girl who always made her feel like she was nothing compared to her when the boys were around. Most of the boys sees Ichika with her friends and praise them with adoration. Fujisaki puts on her best expression to regain the boys' praises as the prettiest girl. But they all leaves her and runs over to Ichika and her friends, as they all prefer older girls. Fujisaki's expression worsens as she loses to Ichika once again. She remembers a period in her life when she got bullied by boys, but made up by bullying them back. While thinking, Tomoya interrupts her to ask if she wouldn't mind swimming with him. Ichika runs from behind and throws herself into them, causing everyone to fall into the pool. The first Fujisaki does is yell at Ichika for being so careless. Ichika doesn't care and retorts she wouldn't allow both of them to be alone. 
Fujisaki, however, throws the blame on Tomoya, who doesn't even react but apologizes for his sister's careless attitude whenever she's around. While Tomoya is being caressed by Ichika, Fujisaki feels sorry for yelling and blaming Tomoya for his sister's action. Subsequently, she decides to become nicer to him after that. On a certain holiday, the two step-siblings go shopping together. Ichika seems to be very excited about going shopping with Tomoya. She shifts closer to him and holds his hand. Tomoya doesn't think a girl should be holding his hands like that in public, but Ichika resists, as nobody would think anything else if two siblings held hands together. A foreigner then approached them from behind and asked them a question in English. Tomoya's mood changes as the foreigner was a handsome young guy with blonde hair. However, to Tomoya's surprise, Ichika respectfully answers the guy in English. Tomoya is taken aback again when he replies back in Japanese. Marina shows up from behind and calls out the stranger's name. The duo turns around to meet Marina who in return changes her expression after seeing Tomoya. Ichika asked Marina if he was the older guy she used to tell her about. He says Ichika looks like the photo Marina showed him once. Ichika flares up and starts throwing her hands at him wildly, as she thought he was the evil barbarian, who is trying to toy with Marina's emotions. Tomoya and Marina had to hold her down to subdue her actions. When everyone was calm, the stranger introduced himself as Fuji Suichiru. He explained he was half Russian and was from the north. Tomoya turns his head around to look at Marina's chest size and assumes she definitely didn't seem like Japanese. In some part of her body, Fuji draws closer to Ichika and tells her how she looked so much like that female character from an online game that he is currently playing. Not only that, but he was also a big fan and admired that character. Marina pulls him away and begged Ichika to never let Ruri hear about it. She could already imagine the reaction she would get from Ruri if she ever were to found out. Later, Fuji asked Ichika to go out with him. Ichika proudly declines as she would never go out with anyone but Tomoya. Marina gets embarrassed by Fuji and pulls him away. Few days later, it's now almost Christmas. Tomoya has been with his stepsister for almost a year now. However, this Christmas, Ichika plans to knit for everyone in the house, and later dress up as Santa Claus and deliver Tomoya's cloth to him through his window. Tomoya doesn't like the sound of that. The next day at school, Koki has a swollen cheek from excessive beating from his sister. Tomoya is surprised to see the red bump on his face and asks what happened. Koki says his sister beat him and he feels pity for Tomoya having never witnessed the lash of love from a sister. Tomoya replied he was the one to be felt pity on with his mouth all gagged up like that. Fujisaki joins the trio from behind. They greet themselves and walk to class. In class, some of the boys asked Fujisaki if she would be having any plans for Christmas, but she politely brushed them off with a devil stare. Meanwhile, some of the girls are debating on inviting her to their Christmas party, but they plan not to as she could already be planning to go out with some guy. Fujisaki inwardly starts thinking if Santa could also accept Wish into making all the girls like her more. By the end of the week, Tomoya is out shopping for a Christmas gift for someone. Ichika peeps through a window to watch Tomoya. She overhears when he tells the saleswoman he wanted the present wrapped. She gets upset as the only person Tomoya could be getting a wrapped present for was Fujisaki. Thinking about that popular girl, she felt betrayed and made her very unstable. Tomoya then gets the gift and calms out from the store. Unfortunately, a man ignorantly hits the present out of his hands. Another person kicks it and it falls in front of an incoming bicycle. Ichika runs to the front to give him the present. She doesn't like the idea of him was giving gift to Fujisaki. MC sees her scary face and doesn't take the present back. He said the present was already in the hands of the person whom he wanted to give. Ichika's eyes widens and she jumps on Tomoya. At home, she wears the present which is a stocking. Christmas goes by pretty fast and it's New Year. Ichika dresses up formally in a kimono. She starts taking several photos of Tomoya so they could make some New Year's photo books. The next stop all the friends meet up at the temple where they usually celebrate the start of a year. Ichika and Ruri greet each other and so do their siblings. Koki shakes Tomoya formally and hopes to see him again this new year. 
However, their sister's wishes of them becoming close friends spoils the boy's greeting. Marina shows up and greets everyone a happy new year. Fujisaki also appears from behind and greets them, although Ichika isn't very happy about her presence. Fujisaki feels the same way too. She inwardly makes sure Ichika wouldn't steal her popularity again. Mitsuru suddenly appears in their midst and compliments the girls for being such beauties in their kimonos. He even disparaged the girls in his class for their little gratification compared to high school girls as his classroom girls lack sex appeal. His stupid comment about her and the class girls made Fujisaki very furious. While giving prayers, Ichika blurts her prayers publicly which was dedicating her life to forever chasing MC. He then gets super embarrassed and chases her off the altar. Meanwhile, Ruri thinks the both of them are really close. She asked her brother what he thought about it, but Koki threw his head to the other side in response. Ruri gets angered by this and takes Koki up from his leg and spun him around. MC and Ichika watched and thought that both of them were really close. Subsequently, Tomoe goes to see how Koki is doing. Koki, however, pretends that was just a lash of his older sister's love. While discussing, they see a little kid who threw his present into a tree branch. Koki decides to help bring it down. After helping, Koki realized he was now stuck, so he called Tomoya for help. Tomoya was a bit surprised by Koki helping, as he'd always known Koki to be a conceited person who looked down on others. Koki retorts angrily and asks how Tomoya thinks of him in such a way. While the sisters watch their brothers with adoration, it's almost Valentine's Day. Ichika frightened Tomoya with questions concerning if anyone had ever given him chocolate. Tomoya replied no and Ichika continued her call while walking away, telling whoever was on with her that Tomoya said no. On her way downstairs, she thought of covering herself up with chocolate, but the caller renounced her idea, saying it would be too scary. Tomoya peeped from the back. On Ichika's way out, she promised to make little chocolate and fill them with so much love to support the entire world. Tomoya's expression changed strongly after hearing Ichika talk. In Ruri's house, the three girls are gathered together. Ruri and Ichika plan to make chocolate for Valentine's Day except Marina. Ruri narrates the first procedure of chocolate making, which was melting them into shape. Ichika is thrilled as she didn't know much about making chocolates. Marina comes up to ask what exactly Ichika had in mind. Ichika's response is to create a huge chocolate for Tomoya, but Marina tells her size isn't only important but quality too. She ponders on her friend's words and agrees that size isn't everything too. However, Marina distorts her face because Ichika could have possibly meant something else entirely by saying size isn't everything. Marina goes back to her chair and leaves the rest of the work for the two of them. Ruri and Ichika continue their work for a long period. After they are done, they take a shower as they both look completely stained with chocolate. When they are done, Ichika shows them the chocolate she made for Tomoya likewise Ruri, who also made for her brother. However, Marina asked them what they would do if their brothers didn't take it. Ruri says she would rack Koki on his face. Ichika said she would throw punches to anyone that tried to give her Tomoya chocolates if not her. Getting home that night, Ichika is faced with a real problem of either waiting till Valentine's Day or giving Tomoya her present at the moment. However, she chose to present it immediately to him, even adding to the fact that she put in some of his favorite flavors to boost the chocolate's taste. To our surprise, Tomoya screams disgusted in his head. Valentine's Day had finally arrived. Tomoya and Mitsuru go ahead checking their lockers if there were any signs of chocolate. After checking out there were none, they decided to give it a rest after all, according to Mitsuru, it isn't common to give out handmade chocolate with ease. The other students in the class present their chocolate to Tomoya and Mitsuru. Somewhere in the class, Fujisaki sat with a thoughtful look. This year she wasn't going to give her entire class chocolate, just a few of her close friends which were Tomoya, Mitsuru, and a special one, Koki. Meanwhile in high school, Ichika and Ruri makes fun of Marina trying to give chocolate to a college student. They think he would one day become a wolf. However, Marina overhears them and yells at them to stop following her. Back at the school, Koki tells MC and Mitsuru, his sister insisted he became friends with monkeys which was them. Fujisaki comes from behind and follows them out. On their way out, 
Mitsuru finds a load of chocolate in his locker. Koki, on the other hand, thinks it's very unhygienic to put food in an enclosed place like that. On their way out, Fuji Saki ponders on the best time to give the three of them their chocolate. At the same time, MC was worried if Fujisaki would give him chocolate. Mitsuri breaks the intensity when he asks Fujisaki if she had any chocolate for them at all. Fujisaki happily brings out her chocolate and gave it to them. She had a bit of struggle, summing up courage to give that one special person which was Koki. Meanwhile, Ichika is watching them from behind. She gets super angry when Fujisaki rubs it on her face after MC accepted her choco. Ichika gets annoyed and they start to playfully struggle with each other. At home, we see MC eating the chocolate of the girls. After Valentine's Day, it's White Day, and to repay Valentine's chocolates, the boys must repay the girls. Therefore, Ichika awaits outside the door for Tomoya. When Tomoya comes, Ichika with her overflowing love tackles him. MC then blushes and presents her with a white day present. Ichika gets extremely happy and pushes him down and shoves a gift on his face, which kinda makes him get mad. The next day in school, Fujisaki opened her locker and saw the chocolate she had gotten from her classmates. Despite not giving anyone else chocolate on Valentine's Day, she also grinned slyly because she was prepared to take whatever came her way. Koki then shocked her from behind to give her a white day present, which caught her off guard. She then deeply falls in love with him and almost starts to fantasize confessing her love to Koki. Then Tomoya shows up from behind. Tomoya then gets her a chocolate. Fujisaki felt so loved that she blushed throughout the moment. On the other hand, Koki understood why his sister gets so many Valentine's Day gifts on the Valentine's Day. It's like a confession for boys. When Tomoya returns home, Ichika seems to be happy to see him. She wanted to share some of the chocolate she got from her classmates. MC laughs and feels bad for those people who gave her those chocolates as a confession, as she is the one who would end up eating it all. After a few weeks, MC's dad and stepmom are on a trip out of town. Leaving both of them alone at home, Ichika seems to be feeling very enthusiastic about spending the night with Tomoya. She wants to know what Tomoya and herself would like to do for the night. But MC then goes down with a fever. She notices his face as he falls to the ground uncontrollably and says his head hurts. Ichika fast checks his temperature and becomes anxious. She screams and piggybacks him fast to him bed. Not knowing what to do, she tries to keep his body warm with hers, but Tomoya pushes her off his bed. Ichika is unbelievably restless. She calls Ruri, the number one biggest sister in the world, to come help her out. Ichika is very pleased to see Ruri. Marina also joins the girls. Marina and Ichika contemplate whether to feed MC apples or not. While doing so, Ruri tells them to quiet down, as the only thing MC needed was a peaceful environment. Moments later, Tomoya opens his eyes. His stepmother's figure accentuates in the dark, but soon he realized it was Ichika, sitting and praying energetically for his fever to go away. Few days later, Tomoya is feeling a lot better now. However, Ichika is now the sick one in the house. When MC goes to keep her warm, she repeatedly murmurs his name, causing Tomoya to blush. We've now reached the final episode of this anime. This starts way before Tomoya and his stepsister met together. This story starts when Achiko was still a little girl. At that point of her life, she was desperately in need of a sibling to subdue the loneliness she felt inside. Anytime she would try to make new friends, her first reaction towards her peers would undoubtedly chase them away. Coincidentally, little Tomoya is crying out for his mother. Ichika sees him and takes it upon herself to be a big sister, but before she could come closer to him, Tomoya's birth mother calls Tomoya, and he runs to her embrace with runny eyes. As Tomoya walked out, he looked back at Ichika. By the time he was gone, Ichika thought how cute Tomoya was, saying she wanted a little brother just like Tomoya. Fast forward a few years later, Ichika's mother announces her that she would be remarrying and Ichika would be getting both a father and a little brother. She gives Ichika a photograph of Tomoya. Ichika thinks he is super cute and goes ahead to show her two best friends in school her new super cute stepbrother. The day the two families are meant to meet, 
Ichika's mother hugs Ichika to let out the stress that she was having, trying to pick the perfect dress for their meeting. Meanwhile, Tomoya is going through a photo book containing his pictures from years ago. He also narrates how his mother passed away when he was only in kindergarten. His father pats him from behind and encourages Tomoya saying, how you would continue to be his son forever, causing a warm smile in Tomoya's face. However, before both families meet, Tomoya's father becomes a bit insecure about his looks. Likewise, Ichika, who seemed to have a hard time wondering if her hair was presentable. The doorbell rings and the two families greet themselves. And with that, we end the video. See you all again next time.